You are now unmuted. All right. So preprocessor directives. First of all, uh, let's go through it and see what we mean when we say preprocessor directives. Um, before um, actually going through all the, the things that we are talking about, like when we are actually saying preprocessor directive, we are talking about uh, the compilation of the uh, of the um, the code. And uh, let me just bring something up for you. And show it to you over here. <clears throat> there we go. So I think I've already brought this thing up for you, and so, so you know exactly what it is. So everybody can see this uh, compilation thingy, right? Yeah, yes. I can see it. Okay, beautiful. So uh, also I need this. <clears throat> there we go. So when we are talking about preprocessor directors, first we have to understand what the whole compi compilation thing is and kind of review it and, and, and understand it properly. So the compilation actually happens in different st different stages. We talked about that before and, and I think you recall it. Um, so um, essentially each process of compile, whenever you are compiling your code, uh, the whole compilation scenario doesn't happen in one shot. Like for example, what we see over here, um, uh, I forgot to ask over here, um, is there anybody over here uh, to uh, have trouble, uh, that have trouble seeing colors? If that's the case, uh, could you please uh, uh, give me a thumb down if, if you can't see the colors? Okay, all right, so we're good. So <clears throat> when we have something like this, um, essentially um, what we want to be able to do is to, uh, if we want to actually compile this code, what happens is this. So I have to actually, like whatever, like let's say if we are using uh, the uh, C compiler, well, we, like we, we put G++, then I'm going to say over here blue dot CPP, then red dot CPP, and then green dot CPP, and then brown dot CPP. Okay? Um, are we okay with this? Assuming that the names of the files, like the modules that we have, are blue, red, brown, uh, green, and brown. So, and then you hit enter. Now, this is how you compile your code. Um, now, compiling the code works perfectly like this is absolutely no problem, but when you're actually compiling the code, you write one command over here. With, with this one, uh, wow, that's way too thick. Give me a second. Undo. There you go. So, yeah, as I was saying, this uh, G++ that is written over here, it looks like that it's one command, but essentially what happens over here is this. You have uh, one, two, three, and four files over here. When you issue the compilation command, what happens is essentially series of commands that are happening back to back. So what happens would be essentially this. So first you're going to have G++ blue.cpp happening. Then you're going to have G++ red.cpp happening. Then you're going to have G++ green.cpp happening. And finally G++ brown.cpp. Now the outcome of every single thing that you have over here if successful, it will be an object file, which essentially that generates blue dot object, and this one generates uh, red dot object, and this one generates a green dot object. Assuming again everything is successful, you don't have an error error happening over here. And finally, what happens over here is brown dot object. Now after all these things are done the last command happens which is essentially link blue dot o red dot o green dot o 
green.o and then brown.o and this will create for you the project.exe that you have whatever you you want to call it project so the executable gets created so with what i cr created right now let me just get off this one so with what i created right now i have series of things happening one by one so it's one command that i have executed one two three four five different commands the first four are c plus plus compiler running and the last one is the linker running that essentially links all the objects together the linker of c plus plus that decides to see if everything's present or not okay anybody have problem with this part that i just talked about any questions down to here all right, so <clears throat> linker is not the one that we are talking about. The those four C++ compilation uh, commands are the ones that I'm talking about. Those compilation commands happen in several different stages. Okay, um, so essentially the very first thing that happens compiler looks before any compilation begins compiler looks for anything that starts with a hashtag anything that a hashtag is in front of it it's talking to the compiler telling the compiler what to do for compilation so this has nothing to do with C++ okay not that it's of course it parts of C++ language but it has nothing to do with your logic this is the logic of compiler what compiler should do these are the commands you're giving to compiler to do such and such before compilation begins therefore preprocessor directives so we call these preprocessor directives because they're directions we are giving to the compiler before actually it wants to translate our code to object code okay and there is no I'm not trying to it's not a metaphor of any kind or, or it, this is literally what happens so whenever you want compiler to do something before compilation that's what you write any questions down to here suggestions all right after that compilation happens after sorry after this preprocessor directives happen here's where your first your syntax is going to get checked so essentially it checks to see if you wrote a for loop without an r or something like that after the syntax is done then it's going to go through the second pass to do other things with the language to make sure that there is no crazy logic stuff happening anywhere a function's return statement is missing or something like that so logical stuff happens and all the oh my goodness and all these things happen in um, several passes now hopefully you got to go to university and you get compiler design course and you actually write a small C compiler by yourself and you'll see what I mean so all these things happen in in passes one two three passes one two three keep happening and if at any moment of time something goes wrong it jumps out with an error message uh, telling you to fix it there you go back to the beginning and do whatever you're doing so that's uh, essentially what uh, the compiler is now we are interested in this guy preprocessor directors that we are going to actually talk about right now uh, questions no questions all right all right all right all right so Probably one of the first things that you've ever studied was a defined statement. Okay, now microphones on. Who can tell me what define is? What does it do? Should I select someone? Really? Uh, 
it creates a, a kind of a global variable. It, it creates a global variable. Who else? That's a, that's a good thing. Thank you very much. It creates a global variable. Anyone else? All right, Spencer, what is your idea? What does the find do? Spencer, are you with us? Uh, yeah, like you said, it creates a global variable. Global. But, uh, yeah, you use it in header files to prevent uh, like redefinition. See, also oh, you you made it too. You said you said global variables, and also we added to the header files to prevent recompilation. We we re, you remember that in a process of creating a a safeguard, we actually use the defined statement. Thank you very much. Anyone else has anything to add to this? Fahim? Anyone? Everybody's chickening out? Nobody's talking? I'll get you. Next time I'm going to tell you everybody has to turn on their webcam so I can actually see you're sitting over there in front of the camera, in front of the thing. All right, so uh, yeah, the find statement. So let's talk about the find statement first. Um, the find statement is nothing but a search and replace. That's it. It doesn't do anything else other than what I just told you. It's just a search and replace. Remember that uh, when we were talking about pointers, uh, I wanted to teach smart pointers. I, I actually had a header file, and in that header file of mine, I think it, it was in previous uh, session, so if I go over here, oh, it's O-L-L-O, -L -L -O, I put it wrong. Anyway, so I think it was here. Did I have the pointer? At some place I was talking about smart pointers, and there you go. I think I had a pointer dot, a PTR dot H. There you go. You see this? I wrote define pointer asterisk, define target of something, define. I'm not creating a global variable in here. All I'm saying is go through my text wherever you see a pointer remove that and put asterisk instead wherever you see a target remove that and put an asterisk instead wherever you see an address of remove that and put an ampersand instead instead so the find statement is not actually to create global variables it is essentially a side effect of its job why we do not like define statements to create global variables. The reason is that when you create stuff like this, when you have something like say max 200 and say okay I want to use max whenever I want to have 200, uh, whenever I want to have the maximum value of the arrays of yada yada yada, so you say integer a and then in here you say max, okay? So that's the maximum number of things that I want to have, so that's what I do. The reason that it's not good is that, and I want you to listen to this carefully, when the defined statement happens, it's before compilation. Let, let me make that absolutely clear. Anything happens over here is before compilation. So when the compiler is actually converting your code to binary, to create an object file, file out of it, it means no hashtag thing is remaining. They are all removed. So compiler in several passes goes through all the hashtags and removes them all. Does it and removes it all. For example, for define statement, changes all the maxes to 200 and then it goes out. Okay? So if I do something like this, for example, let's say in my program, let me actually bring a program in here. So if I say over here, include IO stream, okay, then I say over here, int uh, using. namespace std and I write over here uh, define 
max 200 or let's make it 10 for now and then I'm gonna say int main and I'm gonna say int a max uh, set to 1 and 2 and 3 something like that and do whatever I want to do okay and I have a semicolon over here for by mistake okay and and I'm gonna go back to that semicolon thing yeah actually as I as I mentioned it right now as, as I put it over there you saw the error message so in here Bob I'm gonna say C out mm, integer I uh, four integer I set to zero I less than uh, say max and I plus plus and in here I'm gonna say C out a I okay so I am I am doing something like this return zero now if I run this program it runs perfectly and it's gonna show me 10 integers it's taking too long for this why is it why didn't run oh one more time there you go so it compiles it runs it and it's gonna show me uh, one two three and the rest are zero obviously um, I make the properties and uh, make it 20 I think this is better yeah, there you go now what if I actually did this <clears throat> and I compiled this so I'm gonna rebuild this comp uh, program I'm gonna say oh no I'm gonna say rebuild and let's take a look at the error message what does it say it puts the cursor over there it says expected expected square bracket or let's do this point three four okay you see over here max is being underlined right let me recompile What does it say? Constant has type double instead. Uh, constant has type double instead of required unsigned int type, and it comes over here. Does it say anything about max? Do you see in your error message anything talking about anything called max? There is nothing in there. You know why? Because when this compilation is happening, there is no max. When this compilation hap is happening, we have ten point. 3 4 in here and we have 10 10.34 in here and this define statement is gone as a matter of fact this include statement is gone too we have this that include statement is bringing the whole uh, thing over here that that I'm going to talk about later so as you see what you see right now max is completely gone and that's why we do not like define statements why we don't like the file statements because it's very difficult to debug when you actually get the compilation error coming up it says that int doesn't have int doesn't have it has a double value where it's supposed to have um, an integer and if you had something like this if the program was actually something like this and you had this max somewhere deep in the code where you couldn't see the defined statement you would go nuts saying why it's telling me this thing is this is max it's supposed to be an integer because you don't see the max that is up there um, but if we had over here a constant if I if I had something over here like constant max is equal to uh, constant integer max equal to yada yada first of all I couldn't make a mistake like this because it would have rounded it and put it in max therefore max would become 10 secondly if it would have given me an error it would tell me that I over here max is a double and I cannot put anything in there and I cannot use a max for a for a for an index of a carrot so that's the first thing that we need to know number two Another thing that the find statement is made for, uh, it is called a, a macro. Uh, who has, um, did, um, and can anybody help me to see, to see if you have, if anybody told you in OP244 or IPC144 what a macro is? Do we know what a macro is? I never heard. You never heard what a macro? Oh, yeah. okay, so let's see what a macro is. <clears throat> 
So, first of all, we understand what a define statement is now. Define is search and replace. But the define statement is not only search and replace, but it can do something pretty cool, which we call a macro. Now, let's see what a macro is. Now, let's say I want to find maximum of two numbers. So, what I want to do, I'm going to write over here int max. In here, I'm going to say int a, int b, right? And in here, I'm going to say uh, return a less than b. If a is less than b, then obviously b is the max, right? Um, otherwise, a is max. And I'm going to write over here return. If I can type it, there you go, return. So if a is less than b, then b is max. Otherwise, a is max. Oh, yeah. So, or a is greater than b, a is max. Otherwise, b is max. Let's not make it cryptic. Okay. So now in here, I can have int x and y. And I'm going to say c out, uh, enter to, enter two ints. And I'm going to have c in x and y and I can simply say C out uh, the larger value is value is and I'm gonna put over here max X and Y Or let's do this int m m is max I'm gonna do this in stages x and y and in here I'm gonna put that everybody knows how it's going to run it's no mystery it's an IPC 144 literally enter the inch I'm gonna put 10 and 20 and hit enter as because the larger value is 20 Anybody have any problem in this? Beautiful program of mine. Okay, now if I wanted this max thingy to happen in 5,000 different places, if I wanted this max thingy to happen in 5,000 different places, how does the compiler actually run whenever it comes to this function? It has to stop the execution. So essentially, what how the what, how functions are called is this. If I if say I want to do this twice, if I want to actually do something like this, so what happens over here is this: the program execution will happen, which essentially means going to start executing everything from top, coming down. And as soon as it reaches to max, it stops the execution right at this, this point and goes back up to the beginning of max, passing these two arguments to A and B. Max gets executed and then comes back over here and the execution continues. And then after doing all this, it goes back to next line so the, the execution continues it comes over here as soon as this max is called it goes back up over here and then comes back over here and calls it so this is essentially function calls are happening over and over and over but please appreciate what's happening over here now CPU is a linear being what do I mean by that it means it likes to go through everything sequentially uh, you know how CPU instructions are, right? These CPU instructions are essentially a series of assembly or machine code sitting like a gigantic array within a piece of memory. So CPU actually starts at the beginning of that segment and fetches pieces of instructions and executes it and goes to next and executes and, go, and keeps going like that. So which every execution it advances in the address of memory. So essentially if I have something like this as memory and these are my instructions when CPU is running it starts from the beginning one by one executes 
and goes to next executes and goes to next executes and goes to next now if you have a function over here and this function is let's say max and you want this max function to call what you have to do if you have to see what is the address of this place that the execution just ran so the address of next instruction to to run let's say it's 20 if that's the case there is a stack it has to push 20 into the stack and then jump to max then max gets executed one by one and reaches to the end the return command of yours is essentially a pop from that stack so when you say return it pops this value out what is the value 20 it means CPU now go back and start executing from here and then it continues and then another function call over here let's say it's address 30 compile uh, CPU reaches over here you have another ex function call now this is popped out the 20 is popped out 30 is pushed instead in and now so if you have five function calls it keeps start piling up and every return pops that out that's how the program knows where to return to when you do return like when you write a return at the end of the max how does it know to go back where when you have five maxes which one is the one it's all pushing right it pushes one inside and keeps going like that so and then and the next one so obviously when the next one is called in the next call it pushes that 30 in and that jumps from there to max executes max uh, instruction by instruction as soon as return statement comes in pops 30 so it knows it has to go back to 30 and keeps going ahead uh, Fred I have a question so you say that return pops out the address of the memory so it can uh, goes back to where it was what happens in case of void functions that we are not returning? it doesn't matter it doesn't matter no no uh, my dear uh, the return statement is not the return value of max okay let me clear this up and explain it again the return statement is not the return value of max let's assume let me just do it like this I'm gonna do something else over here uh, and uh, this is something that, that you really need to know because you're becoming C professional C++ programmer so let's do this together if you don't mind and I want everybody's attention on this and I'm gonna make the text as small as possible so I can actually uh, uh, deal with this so let's say I have over here int um, uh, I'm gonna call it get nums and in get nums I'm gonna do uh, uh, see uh, uh, I'm gonna do another one of these so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna just gonna repeat the code in here so what I have over here I'm gonna have it over here I'm just I just want to use function max several times okay so uh, question is that can you see this code now is there anyone who cannot see and it's too small for them no, it's fine it's fine okay yeah. so let's assume now I want you to pay attention to this let's assume each line that you see over here one two three four five let's say, say these are the addresses of the memory where the instructions are sitting in memory now so our CPU at this moment that we are executing this program our CPU is sitting on address one getting ready to execute the program and this is what we call our stack program stack okay so it comes over here it, uh, include um, O stream is happening then this happens then this happens so it comes actually um, uh, sorry my apologies my apologies oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For, forget what I said that was compilation uh, I made a mistake just erase whatever I said from your brain and let me start again okay so I'll redo so this is my stack my program wants to run this is the beginning of where everything's running 
you just link your program and link her tool to CPU that's the beginning of everything so CPU starts from here and it keeps executing so it comes over here line 15 line 16 line 17 enters to integer C in is called then it comes over here correct it comes at line 19 now on line 19 it wants to call max Sahar was it right it was the question from Sahar 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 oh, sorry Sahar Sahar could you please tell me what is the address of max where the max is sitting in memory three three yeah it's on line three right and you said what what number is in front of max no no the one that is being called in main oh 19 19 what is the next instruction it's line 20 correct 20, yeah. 20. so before max is called number 20 will be pushed in here well what a coincidence it became exactly 20 okay now max is called because it's called it it knows where it is why because the name of each function we learned before holds the address of the function in memory remember that so mm -hmm. it comes up to address 3 because max is in address 3 it goes to address 3 runs the thing and says return say it returns 52 so 52 is supposed to go to M return statement means pop what is going to get popped 20 20 so it knows the next instruction is 20 so it goes to 20 now let's assume at line 20 um, let's come over here I want to just uh, create a scenario that um, give me a second So we have get nums over here, right? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put. Uh, let me just. Uh, so just to make sure I give got me two seconds. Give me two seconds. Give me two seconds. No, 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 no. You didn't get anything yet. Give me a second. Get okay. nums. And I'm gonna make this a void so it actually fits what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's continue. All right. So we were at this point. It came over here. Popped 20. 20 was popped. It comes to this address it comes to this address now 20 function get nums is called correct what yeah. is the next instruction 21 correct mm -hmm. because it's 21 the address 21 will be pushed in here 20 was popped so this becomes 21 because 20 was popped it was gone right it's 21 it goes to get nums keeps executing the line one by one comes over here now it comes to max again correct what is the yeah. next instruction after max line number 12 correct yeah. so 12 is pushed into the stack now it goes to max comes over here executes it says return when it's popped what is it that's got to get popped 12 the top one correct so it knows it has to go back to line 12 not line 20 not line 25 max is called in three different places correct yeah the one is returned that is the top address in a stack therefore it goes back over there and executes that one and now goes to the larger value is does that one comes to the next return statement that return statement is hidden you don't see it end of any function is essentially a return statement correct mm -hmm. now that the 12 is returned it popped the next address is 21 correct mm -hmm. so now 21 is popped it comes back to 21 and continues and it keeps going like that and that's why when you make a mistake and you write a code like this If I actually write a code like this, what happens? Oh, it's going to call. It's like going to keep forever. calling itself, correct? Yeah. And it's going to keep pushing the address 5 into the stack over and, over and over and over and over and over and over and it never ends. Correct? 
-hmm. and that's when it actually runs that's what happens when it actually runs and you get this error message so if I so if 10 20 and a while passes and it didn't give me an error it's supposed to give me an error saying stack overflow <laughs> that's the <laughs> exception but it didn't it just crashed okay it probably this if you google this return code it's going to tell you stack overflow okay so it it crashed because the stack there was a stack overflow and and that's what happened so that's what it is my point is now let's go back to macros I wanted to make this thing, but Sahara always have to investigate what is underneath the things. So, so the whole point is that a function call is a very expensive thing. Lots of processes happen for a function to be able to get called. So if you have a process that is supposed to have happened millions of times, especially when your function is small, instead of writing the function it's better just to put the little thing in here and get over with it why do i call a function when i can just write that over there correct problem is that if i do that every single time i have to go rename this a and b to x and y next time rename it to the other one next time to and i don't want to do that i don't want to call a function but at the same time i want it to act like a function that's where I write a macro. And what is a macro? A macro is essentially a smart define statement where I can come over here and say, okay, define I don't put a type over here because macro is pretty dumb. It just it just searches and replaces. And in here I'm gonna say I'm gonna actually put oh sorry. I'm going to actually put this statement right over here. Oh. Without a semicolon. So I'm essentially telling to the find statement, wherever you see max, put X instead of A, put, sorry, instead of A, put the first thing, instead of B, put the next thing. So in here, if instead of X and uh, X and Y, I have I and J. In here, I, and I have I and J. In here, I can do max I, I well, J and I, whatever, that is no difference. So what happens, they call this this macro is going to expand to this before compilation so compiler looks at all the maxes that it has over here takes this out and applies it to this pattern which essentially means what does it mean it means j less than i question mark j and i correct so it expands it to this one and it goes to next and next and next so what happens is that there is no function called anymore therefore macros are extremely faster than functions but macros are out to be one-liner functions mostly functions that are not expand that are supposed to expand to big values you can actually write multi-line macros but that's just stupid it's better not to do it because if you have a function that is 500 lines and you want to make it a macro then your program is going to grow exponentially don't forget that i have a max over here and the search and replace of all maxes end up to expansion of what the code is in front of them now if this was 500 lines of code I called max three times I'm gonna have three 500 lines of code added to my, my to my program and that's absolute nonsense we can't do that so macros are supposed to be small little things that we do not want to waste time calling them as a function but we would deal with them as a macro do we understand what a macro is now I want I want uh, can I ask a question 
Of course, you can ask. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, basically, how are we not going auto sequence when we are uh, putting a macro there? What's auto sequence? So you said that CPU goes into the sequence and there is no sequence anymore. There is no function anymore. This is gonna expand to this x less x less than y. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So everything's but the gonna. Is so that, what? Let me like. There is, is no function anymore. It? Every this is gone at at runtime. At runtime, we have just instructions. Uh -huh. There is no function anymore. Therefore, it's a linear execution and it's extremely fast. There is no function calls anymore. It just goes to the next one. Like it just goes there to the next is one. no reference to other There is no things. reference to anything uh, anymore because remember, remember the golden rule of preprocessor directives as I mentioned before. Preprocessor directives vanish at runtime. The yeah. whole point is that when compiler runs, it goes through every single preprocessor directive, interprets them to whatever they are supposed to be, um, and then replaces them with those values. Therefore, this will be removed at compile time. It doesn't exist anymore. Oh. Nice. Yeah, and that, okay, that makes you. it extremely fast. It is a nice thing, actually. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are we okay with this? Anybody that's like, I want... a. Uh, I want to know who didn't, who did understand this. Give me a thumb up. I want to see actually how many people are listening actually to me now, because this is going to be one of your questions, you know, in the in a test. I actually don't have a for that. Okay, if you have a question, ask me. Was it a question? Uh no, I just need to repeat for that uh, the explanation. Oh, you want me to repeat the explanation? I quite didn't understand that. Oh yeah, so the, the explanation was that if you recall, if you remember that that, that the the awful arrows and things that I written when max was actually a function, and I said it's lots of processing to be done every single time a function is called. You have to push lots of stuff, pop lots of stuff, and it's very time consuming and memory consuming so instead of doing that if we do a defined statement every single function of us will be actually trans expanded to a single uh, statement therefore no functions therefore linear executions and therefore high speed of execution usually when you are writing like doing sim simple you when you are doing single uh, floating point calculations to do games people don't write functions for that because you want your games to run lightning fast you don't want that character to run slowly on a screen you want it to be fast in those type of situations when you have small calculations that you want to be done you don't want to have functions over there you write macros are we okay and that's that's um, defined through the defined statement it is defined statement defined statement is actually that People, that's mostly what it's used, not for the other things. You know what I mean? The fine statement is mostly used for macro, macros, but because we are rookies, we use it for the fine statement, something that we are not supposed to. We are used to we, we, we should use constants instead. So essentially, when you don't define, when you don't put parentheses in front of define, you're just saying, I want this to be changed with whatever I want to. A simple search and replace, exactly as if you have written a, a, a letter to someone. Uh, the name was, I don't know, uh, Jen, and you thought it's it's a lady, and then you wrote she, and then you find out, oops, it's a gentleman. Uh, you want to change all the she's to he's. You search and replace all the she's and replace it to he before sending the email. That's the exact same thing over here. Before you want it to get compiled, I want all the things to be changed to something else. That, that's what we use the find statement for, which is not a good thing. For that, we should use global constant variables. So the find statements should actually be used for macros mostly. Are we good? Are we okay, one? Are we okay too? Okay, I got thumbs up from how many people? Let me see. I got thumbs up from most of the people, and the rest are sleeping. 
and you have no idea why you are giving thumbs up do you you just see other people are having thumbs up over there you just back came back from having a coffee and you, let me give thumbs ups everybody's doing it Abel are you sleeping or are you there Abel's sleeping he's babysitting oh he's babysitting oh Abel I feel you Okay. <laughs> I know I forgot I forgot okay all right all right I uh, kind of uh, went after the wrong guy I think <laughs> I actually actually sent me an email telling me that so all right so we're good down to this point uh, and uh, so that's a defined statement now I'm going to write something over here and I want answers for this so I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask you something and I want the answers uh, uh, <laughs> and my wife doesn't consider me I know I'm sorry I, I, I'm sorry that I'm being stereotyped over here but um, I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways so let's uh, let me I'm going to give you a question now and, and see what happens okay um, so let's write uh, some other code in here so you've written this you've seen this code that I have written uh, uh, so I'm gonna actually save this thing as micro one and what is the time oh wow we have 15 minutes before we do uh, when do we start the test nine minutes nine minutes okay so we're gonna continue the rest of it the next day that you're coming in that's fine I'm just gonna give you one question and then we're gonna go for the text explanation car I have four minutes and five minutes I have to explain what the test is so um, so I'm gonna call it zero one macro CPP I'm just gonna show uh, give you one example and I want you to take a look at it and see what's going on uh, so um, in here instead of that I'm gonna put some okay some a and I'm gonna say over here a plus B very straightforward <clears throat> okay so I'm gonna say enter two ints and I'm gonna say M is sum and I'm gonna multiply the result say by two okay and I'm gonna say over here I'm gonna say over here sum sum of X and and Y multiplied by two is And I'm gonna put over there M. Everybody's okay with this? And in here I'm gonna say C out M. Oh, we have a C out M. So my question is, and I want everybody to listen to me carefully. If user enters two, two and five. What is the output of this program? Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen. Okay. Everybody's okay with this? Ah, I like that. One person, the first person fell for it. The other are actually answering correctly. Yes, it's not 14. Remember, sum is a stupid... Uh, Define is a stupid thing. It just searches and replaces, which means this will be expanded to M is set to A, sorry, X plus Y multiply by 2, which means this is going to happen first, which means 5 multiplied by 2 will be 10, and that's 12. So it's absolutely wrong thing so if I say over here actually 2 and 5 it's gonna say sum of 2 and 5 multiplied by 2 is is 12 which is not <laughs> it's it is absolutely wrong right it's supposed to be 14 so what do we do 
one of the most important rules of creating macros is that always put everything in parentheses everything which means this has to go to parentheses a has to go to parentheses b has to go because there is no way for you to say if nobody's gonna do something like this If you have something like this, you want to make sure this happens first, this happened first, and then the sum of two. So you have to put everything in parentheses to make sure that the sum you are writing actually becomes what you were writing. So this is a good one. And this was the bad one. All right, are we okay with this? Anybody's okay with we understand what happened, hopefully? If anybody has any problem, let me know. All right, so uh, that's that. I'm going to, uh, this is the bad one. Bad one, and uh, let me put this thing back what it was before, X and Y. So you can actually run it in different ways. Put the good one and a bad one. So this one, if I do the good one in here and I run it, the, the answer for this thing will be, three years later, uh, 2 and 5 will be 14. But if I put the bad one over here, you'll see that the one that we are going to run will be the bad one. Okay? We'll stop it right over here. Let me talk about the, the test. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, we'll continue, pick this up afterwards. Any questions down to here? This preprocessor direct is something that is extremely important for you to know as a C++ programmer. So the next day you are coming in, uh, the lab that we have on Wednesday, before we do the test for files, we're going to complete this lecture. Okay, let me stop the recording. Stop the recording. Yes, and stop that recording.